came in as uh, a very older technique where the earlier they used to separate uh, the plant pigments particularly example chlorophyll which is present in uh, the plant products they want to uh, can be separated the uh, main uh, disadvantage of this uh, liquid chromatography is that it is a time consuming then uh, solvent usage then resolution these are all the uh, factors which uh, made this uh, liquid chromatography little bit uh, tedious job or tedious work so in order to modify this one so in the year 1970 the term called as hplc came into existence so all were aware that uh, the liquid chromatography chromatography is a, a technique where uh, we can uh, separate the components so i have to give credit to the t- twist uh, who is the So scientists who coined the term chromatography. Chromo means uh, color and uh, graphy means uh, writing. Uh, so it has got uh, various uh, advantages. The HPLC in the sense high performance liquid chromatography. So there are n number of uh, alternative names what you call for the HPLC. To name some it is also called as high uh, elevated pack uh, liquid chromatography system. The system where the manufacturing and particularly we can see that uh, as on today the waters being a pioneers in this uh, hpl system they have their own system then uh, other thing is high performance uh, uh, high patient liquid chromatography where the, the technique technique is very uh, tedious and that means uh, we can see the lot of patience is required whenever you are going for an trainer here so keeping in all these views i would like to briefly highlight on hplc so as well uh, where it is a classical separation technique so which can be achieved by the distribution of the substance uh, between two phases namely one is the stationary phase and another is the mobile phase so the uh, liquid chromography uh, separates based upon these uh, forces gravity so it also depends upon the uh, uh, the pressure gravitational force or uh, the uh, what you call the mobile phases what which you are using so when it comes to the polarity is concerned so <clears throat> this is the uh, brief about the hplc the technique uh, which is uh, having the uh, more advantages with respect to diameter is concerned and with respect to smaller surface area so the uh, high performance liquid chromatography mainly works upon uh, the basic principles so this is general schematic uh, uh, diagram of hplc where you can see uh, the main uh, components uh, uh, mobile phase reservoir pump uh, column then uh, we have injector pole uh, injector point then uh, collector finally it goes to the uh, Uh, the hard, uh, so controlling capacity and then finally it will be displayed in the chromatography so hplc is uh, having some of the uh, advantages over other chromatographic techniques to name few one is the resolution very important then second uh, is the uh, uh, sample requirement sample requirement is very uh, in micrograms level so with respect to other uh, chromatography techniques and uh, uh, it has got the no n number of applications with respect to the application is concerned so this is a schematic diagram where the components is displayed uh, apart from this there are another the two to three uh, important points where in the instrument is you need to have a look on that one so uh, one is the system control second solvent reservoir tubing pump injection device column detector and recorder Uh, the when it comes to the system controller so it is as the name itself indicates it can be controlled by the uh, model based uh, something or we can just say the pc based uh, 
devices. So these are the designed for the control of the sample introduction functions. So they uh, in intellectually communicate with all the HPLC models and uh, completely control their operations. As I told earlier, they are PC based devices with sophisticated software for the data processing. Then second component, second important part in HPLC is the solvent reservoir or it is also called as mobile phase reservoir. So, <clears throat> where it generally is made up of stainless steel and glass. So it has got uh, some ideal characters, ideal uh, characters with respect to the uh, mobile phase is concerned. So the composition of these reservoirs should be inert and uh, they should be a, should not be not reactive with the solvent because whichever the solvents you are using in the case of mobile phase. So in many cases, aqueous and organic solvents are degasifier to the use. So if the reservoir is made up of glass, then you need to take a proper uh, precaution. That is, you have to be you have to handle the handle with care. And after preparing the mobile phase, the very important criteria is you have to go. Uh, go for the degassing of the solvent. So degassing generally it is uh, uh, used to remove the foreign particles which are which may be present in the form of air droplets in the mobile phase. So by knowingly or unknowingly if you inject the sample so that may lead to the uh, spoilage of the form. So that's why so after preparing the mobile phase is very important to degas the solvent. So there are n number of techniques uh, which are used for the degassing of the solvent. That means uh, to remove the foreign particles or the other particles from the mobile phases. So one is the vacuum by pumping you can do it and it's another by distillation or another by heating. And the commonly used uh, technique for the removal of this uh, degassing material is by the sonication. So sonicator is commonly used uh, to remove the the gassing solvents. So next point is the pumps. So this is the main, the main function of the pump is to pass the mobile phase through the column at a high pressure and at a control rate. And it should be uh, should be made from materials that are inert to the mobile. So it's a very important point. So whichever, whichever the mobile phase you are prepared, so the pump should be uh, inert to the mobile phase uh, which are you are preparing. And generally, these pumps are made up of glass or, by st or stainless steel or teflon and uh, sapphire. So, based upon the parameters required, so these uh, pumps can be classified into three types. One is the constant pressure pump, then constant flow rate pump, then pump for the gradient evolution. This is schematic representation of uh, reciprocating reciprocating piston pump. So it has got advantages where high output pressure is achieved by this and uh, there will be constant flow rates and readily adaptable to gradient dilution system. And uh, followed by disadvantages, it produces pulse flow and then there may be a baseline noise. Then second type is syringe drive pumps. Here the mobile phase is displayed from a chamber by using a variable speed stifter, steep motor which drives the piston and it has got the advantage that it's, it is a pulse less slow and requires no check valves. Slow flow must be interrupted periodically to refill the chamber. This is uh, how the syringe drive pumps are usually look. Then next is the sample injection system. So is one of the uh, limiting factor in which uh, the liquid commodity physics lies is in reproducibility with the with which sample are introduced. The one um, uh, may be the one of the troubleshooting is the overloading. So overloading uh, is usually achieved when the, you Knowing you are only inject the sample before the uh, sample gets saluted. So, uh, the sample's accumulation will take place in the column and that will uh, lead to the band broadening. So, it's one of the 
what you call troubleshooting which can occur in this system then there are uh, different types of uh, injecting devices uh, one is by syringe injection so which is a older technique which is the earliest and the simplest technique so it is a self sealing resometer syringe with uh, reproducibility is poor but uh, there is one of the disadvantages second uh, technique is by uh, stop flow injection system so here it is uh, uh, similar to the syringe but solvent flow is stopped momentarily so where the, you can have the flow, solvent flow slowly and a fitting at the column head is removed and sample is injected directly into the head of the column column packing at a similar atmospheric pressure so fitting is replaced and system is pressurized technique is extremely simple and resolution is not affected so that's why this technique is usually for so next third technique is the solvent flowing the sample air sampling valve as loops are used mainly 10 microliter sample in the range of 1 to 9 ml can be handled without affecting uh, hence system is very popular so where you can see this is a diagrammatic representation so loading the position and after injecting so when you once you get the sample preparation injecting and then you can inject the sample then important component in uh, hplc is column so column is uh, considered as a heart of the hplc system so where why it is considered as a heart is because most of the, the separations takes place in this only so the quality and the type decides the separation efficacy so the maintenance of the column now to maintain the good uh, resolution and uh, better uh, results so hence it is usually equipped with uh, guard columns so the role of guard columns are used to increase the life span of the hplc column uh, i will give an example because whenever you knowingly or unknowingly inject the sample so there may be a possibility of uh, foreign particles which may be present in the form of a dissolved globules so that has to be eliminated otherwise it will get accumulated in the column and then column gets spoiled it's so not only column further it may be cause problem to the pump also that's why it is uh, necessary to use a guard column in order to increase your uh, life span of the hplc column so the guard columns are usually used to check the columns you are using for the separation for example if you are using a reverse space c18 column then reverse space c18 guard column is also available so that uh, columns you can use as a guard column i can just fit it so it is usually about 1 uh, by 1 by 8 of the main column so they are usually packed with a material similar to the main column so which acts like a as a toler layer filter absorbing impurities which are present in the sample or in the gullet so generally this uh, guard column is placed in between the injector and the analytical column so this is the figure where it represents the guard column you can just see guard column is fixed or it is fitted in between the injector and the analytical column uh, there are different types of columns one is the analytical column preparatory column micro bore column the analytical column is used to obtain qualitative and quantitative information on the sample and it also depends upon the column specifications the particle size 3 to 20 mm micrometer and the pore size should be 300 and so on the column loaded should be 10 to the power of minus 10 to the power of 30 grams sample per gram of the pack so the analytical column has a uh, good advantages is it a good separation efficacy is achieved and the integral column efficacy also then prepared column you know, they are uh, these are the modification of analytical columns which are used to isolate and purify the sample so again there are sub types there are uh, three types one is the micro preparative preparative and macro preparative or they have internal diameter of the item packing is the last particles the column load is 0.001 to 0.1 gram sample gramming of the load capacity so micro bore columns usually the size is uh, to small 0.5 to 2 mm they offer several advantages 
one is the high speed so due to the narrow diameter uh, less solvent consumption so the sensitivity is more the only limitation of this micro bore column is that the system should be should should have low dispersion then the uh, column materials column what you are on the column packing materials uh, columns they have uh, different types of columns which are uh, it may be reverse is reverse space c8 in column c8 column sin column etc so all these uh, columns which have got uh, packing materials the packing materials include uh, either it may be a pellicule or a porous so pellicule it is nothing but a non porous spherical glass or uh, polymer beads with a diameter of 30 to 40 micrometer and which has got a layer of silica or aluminum which is deposited over it sometimes the liquid stationary phase is held by uh, adsorption over it it also treated chemically to give organic surface layer the porous material include composed of uh, silica aluminum or iron exchange so usually wetted with the organic films which are physically or chemically bonded to the surfaces so this uh, is the uh, figure represents the packing material of uh, the column which are usually used so then comes the detector so detector plays a very important role uh, the main uh, uh, basic re- uh, requirements or i would call a ideal <coughs> detector should have the following properties one is the low drift and noise level so when it comes to the trace analysis and should have high sensitivity should be fast response for high performance system wide linear dynamic uh, range low dead volume that means minimal peak rounding and uh, remixing of the separated bands Insensitivity to change in type of solvent, flow rate, and uh, temperature. So operationally, simplicity and reliability, tunable so that the detection can be optimized for uh, different compounds. So preferably non-destructive. Commonly, UV visible detector is used. so it is used with some modifications as per the sample cell is required or sample cell is there so there are again two types one is the fixed wavelength and another the variable wavelength in uh, fixed wavelength the commonly the mercury cap lamp is used in variable grating or prism are used as a proper chromatographers so may be little expensive and uh, have complex in nature so this is the diagrams uv wave uv detector then the uh, uv detector flow two type fill filters dual photo cell systems then uh, next type is diode array detector so it is uh, costly when compared to the uv detector so it usually measures the observance of uh, constantly moving mobile face it gives the entire spectrum using different wavelength is having a sensitivity of 1 to 10 microam per ml another detector refractive index detector it usually measures the refractive index in the mobile phase a refractive index of pure mobile phase and that with the sample differs so this difference is measured and magnified uh, usually used uh, for uh, separation of polymers and carbohydrates as they show no absorption property and they don't give color reactions another type of detector is a fluorescence detector which usually measures the fluorescence property of the compound and is having sensitivity of 1000 uh, uh, to 10000 more as compared to the uv detector so it's highly selective so particularly when you want to separate the bilayer classes assays for, for example uh, you can separate fluoro imino assay with it so in such cases you can use the fluorescent detector then you have another detector called as a nucleic chemical detector so this uh, electrochemical detector and uh, uv or whatever the other detectors are they can be used so overall uh, what message or the 
information we can give by this presentation is that the HPLC technique is a widely used technique nowadays. Uh, only important thing is you have to go for the, you should know the troubleshooting, what are the uh, troubleshootings which you to come the overcome the problems. So it has got uh, a number of advantages I told earlier. So the resolution is concerned, separation of the component and uh, the uh, sample is concerned unlike the other other uh, chromatography techniques require a lot of samples, a uh, lot of uh, chemicals required and time consuming and all this. So this is a brief uh, presentation of HPLC. So, Thank you. So there are some other references like to quote.